use astronomy in order to first to um, show people how the evidence-based uh, worldview is working. Um, basically, science over the last 500 years has used that kind of philosophy to propel us to tremendous amount of understanding and material benefits that we have all around us. I always tell my students that their cell phones and their iPods and their laptops, all of this stuff all comes from science and computers and that their lives have changed drastically uh, because of science and technology over the last 500 years. So this is the essence of what we try to do. We try to teach astronomy and yet look at the broader interaction of uh, uh, science and society and the advancement on the last uh, several hundred years and give the students a good visual and personal experience. So here on the screen we see a, um, an example of a visually stunning picture that we have lots of these in astronomy. These are uh, all stars in the new clusters of stars that have just been formed over the last several tens of millions of years. So in cosmical times it's very, very young because the universe is about 14 billion years old. And what I tell the students is one of the most fascinating stories here is that all of us, everything around us, including ourselves and everything you see in this room in this university, is all star stuff. What I mean by that is that we would not have been here unless the elements that we are made of would not have been processed in the midst of stars. So this is kind of a beautiful, unique connection to nature and to the universe as a whole to know that every, almost every single atom in our body was produced in the center of a big massive stars eons and eons ago, was thrown into the galaxy in a huge explosion, and the sun through the solar nebula had collected it together, and at the end, here on Earth, we have all the healthy elements and everything that makes life. So we are literally star stuff. Here is another example that I show my students. This is a beautiful picture of a galaxy that is relatively close by. And again, it's all connected. What we have learned, even just over the past hundred years, if your great-grandfather had taken astronomy class hundred years ago, he wouldn't even know that galaxies exist. Our universe was very small and our understanding of what's happening had um, increased vastly over the past hundred years. So now we know that this is what we used to call an island universe. Why do we call it that way? Because this is a huge conglomeration of stars. There are about hundred billion stars here. And this galaxy is actually a quite similar to our own galaxy. So you can think of that as looking at our own galaxy from far away and seeing us. Now, <coughs> It's interesting to note that we always find that the um, position of humans in the cosmos is far from what we hope for. We are not on the center stage. We are in a small planet that is far, you know, that is next to a star. It's not the largest planet in the solar system. Our sun is a non-unique star in the galaxy, totally average, and we are not in any place special in the galaxy. We are about two-thirds away, and we sit in a quiet uh, suburb of the galaxy doing what we are doing, and just think of other possibilities. There are 100 billion stars like the sun in this galaxy. How many of them have planets similar to the Earth, and how many of them had um, the chance to produce life? Now, this is a very, very hot topic. Currently, uh, NASA and lots of other agencies are strongly involved in trying to find planets, and they find them by droves, and almost every week when I teach my students, there is another news story about finding more planets and, uh, uh, you know, closer to the size of the Earth and all kind of interesting things. So we go over that. The stuff that we are teaching is very much alive. This is not uh, stale you know, old scholarly stuff, this is definitely a thing that are moving and being formed right in front of our eyes. Okay, so what we see here is another uh, example to how things connect together. This is a very detailed picture of the surface of Mars. This is a crater on Mars, and we see here details as small as several meters in size. Now, again, I like to zoom out for my students and remind them that up until 
500 years ago, Mars was a god that was just flying in the sky. We didn't have any notion what it is really. We didn't know it's a world that is anything like the Earth. We just had our legends that were basically uh, put into this uh, celestial wonder. Now, fast forward 500 years, what we now have is a beautiful and rich data and understanding of a world that is magnificent, that is very similar to the Earth. It has a tiny atmosphere, and uh, because of that, uh, it cannot support uh, life or uh, liquid water as, uh, uh, as today, but we have good evidence that it had liquid water up until about 2 billion years ago. There might have been life on Mars, and NASA and the American public, which mean you guys, are paying tremendous amount of money in trying to find the either uh, fossil life or even uh, you know, living organisms on Mars today. So the jump from just seeing a dot of light in the sky to the richness of understanding of a world that is very similar to us, that has polar ice caps and a weather system and volcanoes and lots of other things, and it might even be the next destination in the next few decades for human landing, is just staggering how much we have advanced over the... Uh, past 500 years. This is kind of the awe that I hope I'm uh, instilling in my students.